want to get crazy, let's get crazy. What's going on guys and welcome to another reputized video. Today I'm going to do a revisit of Halloween 2018. I've been meaning to do this for a while so I apologize if I'm late about it. First of all there's going to be some spoilers so if you've not watched the film yet I suggest you turn this review off, go and see it, rent it, and come back. So here we go. Basically what I'm going to do is recap over all of the scenes that I think worked and didn't. I was going to have this scripted, but I figured, you know, why not? I, I'm just going to talk off the top of my head. So I apologize if I get off script a little bit. So here we go. Halloween 2018. As everybody knows, the hype was really strong back in October when it, when it released in theaters. And it's basically set 40 years after the events of the first one. And disregards all of its sequels, as I said in the, my original review. And speaking of, my opinions has changed a little bit on this film. Not for the worst, not by far. I watched it twice in theaters, and probably about four or five, maybe six times on Blu-ray now. And so, of course, I'm going to notice more things. I'm going to nitpick a little bit, so I don't, I don't mean to sound too nitpickish, but it's just some things I've got to get off my chest. First and foremost, the positives are sound. The story was awesome. I love the way they did Jamie Lee Curtis's character. With her PTSD and everything that she went through, she lost her friends and she got stalked by Michael Myers. And she put up a hell of a fight at the end of that film. So of course it's going to imprint on her mind and it's going to screw up. It's just like somebody going into war and then witnessing all of this awful shit that soldiers face day in and day out. If you're lucky enough to survive, you come home, but you're going to have that imprint on you. And it's going to have some side effects. That's what they did with Jamie Lee Curtis's character in this. And I thought it was really awesome. They explored that aspect a little bit in Halloween H2O, but not as deep as this. David Gordon Green's direction on that was really awesome. He's who directed this film. I thought he did a really good job on that. You know, Michael Myers, played by James Jude Courtney, I believe he played him when he was masked, when he was doing his thing. So there really wasn't no problem there. He didn't live up to the original, I do admit. He wasn't that dark force, that mystery behind the trees, that shadow that lurks around the corner. He wasn't like that, only in, except for like one scene. But he was still a force to be reckoned with. Nick Castle, he provided the scenes where he was unmasked when they were transferred at the, at the beginning of the film. Nick Castle provided those scenes, and he did a really good job. He's also the guy that did, that actually played Michael in a few scenes in the original. So, kudos. You know, all the characters I, I mainly had a problem with was the Zartain character, the Doctor. I didn't feel like his character was necessary because... Although, yes, you had to throw in a doctor in there, kind of like Loomis, but you can't ever measure up to the great Donald Pleasance. And plus, his motives, his curiosity, I felt was real out of place, and it just really didn't make sense for this. There's even a scene in there where Laurie actually speaks to him and says, You're the new Loomis. I cringed when I heard that. You can't be an exact copy or anything that of a great character like Loomis and that a great actor brought to life. So you, no, you just can't do that. And the whole Ray character, he wouldn't even exist in my cut. A lot of the dumb jokes that really didn't even need to be in this film came from him. I mean, it came from other spots of this movie, but he didn't even see it serve any purpose. I would have digitally removed him from some of the shots where it would show Laurie and her daughter talking 
and like cut the rest of the scenes where he's in it. Take those shots out. Just, just, no. I like the sheriff in this. I thought he was the only character in this film that that really showed any common sense. I thought he, he acted realistically as if this was happening in real life, if this, as if there was a, an actual guy in a white mask out there stalking people, wherever town, whatever town that might be, the sheriff of that town better act like Will Patton's character in this film. He just had that sense of knowing what to do. And going back to what I said about him being the only one in this film that actually knows what to do. The other characters, some of those characters was acting kind of stupid. You know, why would you go up into a bus after spotting a bunch of mentally disturbed people on the highway? Why would you even get out? Call the sheriff. Call the police. That's all I'm saying. There's a few problems I have with this film. I get this is a slasher film and people have been acting like this since the slasher era started. Still, something's got to give. And that's why I really admire Will Patton's character in this. The pacing of this felt a little off. Though, it's not ruining the movie for me completely, but I felt like it was a little off. There were certain scenes in there that I still felt like could have been cut. This film was originally 2 hours and 15 minutes, if I, if I read correctly. And for pacing reasons, they had to cut it down to an hour and 46. This film has been through reshoots, mainly for the ending. And that's not always a bad thing. You know, people will say that all the time. If, as soon as the news hits that something that's been in production for a while has been going through reshoots, they're automatically going to assume, well, this movie's going to suck. Not always the case. Folks, this film was made for $10 million. It made well over $250 million. How is that a failure? But I understand everybody's different. Still, that's the most that out of any of the Halloween sequels. Old, the Rob Zombie ones. This one is what really broke the record for the studios. And it's the only one that made the most out of their budget. So that's got to say something. But get back to what I was saying. There are certain scenes in this film that if I was the editor of that of that movie, I would run up to David Gordon Green, even though he's the ball is usually in the director's court. He has the say of most of everything what goes on. He's the boss. But I would still suggest being an editor, if I could cut out the whole bond me sandwich scene between those two cops. A bond me sandwich. What's, what, what is that? I don't even know what that is. I love that about you, Francis. You're so predictable. You're like a PB&J everyday kind of guy. I would just cut that scene out and then go to the direct, directly the next scene. And there's also another scene where, and like, I think this is like maybe the, the like two scenes that I would cut out. The one I just mentioned. And there's another scene when the girl gets away from the cop car after Michael escapes again. She runs through the woods. And when Jamie Lee Curtis is with her gun... In the final act, and Michael was already at the house, she, it shows her running through the woods and she trips over something. And she looks around and she sees all these mannequins that Lori was using for target practice earlier and she starts screaming. I really didn't understand the gist of that, but whatever. I cut that scene out completely and move on to the next scene. As far as editing, those are the two scenes I felt was out of place. That could have been cut along with everything else, whatever else they cut out of this movie. And there's also a party scene where Allison sees her boyfriend kissing some other girl. I don't care about that. I mean, seriously, I would have rewritten that as, as a way to have, like, still find an, ex an excuse as to why people couldn't call her later. Like, maybe she dropped her phone or something. Because, like, in this cut that we get, her jackass of a boyfriend tosses her phone in that dip, whatever it was. I would have rewritten that whole thing cut out that whole girl kissing scene thing or whatever and just left it at that. And speaking of Will Patton's character, I know I'm backtracking here. Sorry, I didn't script this or anything, so forgive me. I hated the way he died. And back. I'm not going to say it again. Step away from the suspect. Step away. Yeah! <laughs> it was an insult. And go back to what I said about the Zartane character. He wanted to know how it felt to kill. 
because of all his years of studying Michael, he wanted to get inside Michael's head. I, I mean, I get when you're into a case like that and you're a doctor of someone of that nature, like Michael Myers, you're going to get curious, but I have just felt like he took it to an extreme. The direction they went, as soon as Zartane's character killed Will Patton's character, I was thinking to myself, really? And then he puts on the mask as if he was wanting to be the next Michael. And this was after he got, uh, Mike, the actual Michael got ran over with the car, with the police car, and he was on the ground. But come on, I would have at least had Will Patton's character go out with more dignity than that. Don't have the doctor kill him. Have Michael kill him. Have him accidentally get shot or something. I, anything else was better than that. Like I said, it just seems like he was the only one that was making sense. He was wanting to end Michael right then and there. And then the doctor stupidly was like, No! No! I'm gonna kill you! He didn't say that, but still, you get what I'm saying. I felt like that was really stupid, and they could have at least rewritten that or cut that out completely. Anything was, would have been better than that. And I'm, I'm hearing a lot of complaints, especially on social media, about the ending. I really didn't have a problem with the ending. The way it ended, I thought it ended perfectly. With the burning of the house, then you see, like, after they trapped Michael in that little trap house, basement, or whatever, you, whatever Laurie called it, you see him just staring dead at them. And then like later on when they escape from the house and it's burning, it goes back and shows inside as it's burning in that same room, you don't see him. So that tells me right there, there's going to be a sequel. And judging by how much money this movie made, I wouldn't be surprised. $10 million and they make like half, like close to $300 million. When does that ever happen? Especially especially to horror movies. <laughs> but guys, I still love this movie. Setting all of the negatives and the scenes I said I wanted replaced or cut, setting all that aside, it's still a great movie. It's still a great slasher. It's still a great comeback for Michael Myers, one of the most iconic serial killers ever to be invented on screen. And I would recommend this for any slasher fan who's a fan of the Halloween series. Now, I know even though this is a direct sequel to the original, there's there's been a lot of people that's pissed off about that, that, you know, they didn't get a sequel to Resurrection. And I can get why they say that, because I hate it when they leave movies on cliffhangers and they never finish. But to be honest, that's really not the filmmaker's fault. It's just the way things happen. But again, they do that a lot. They set things on cliffhangers, and I hope they won't do that with this one. Because this one did hit in kind of on a cliffhanger. You don't, like I said before, you don't see Michael in that burning house. Where did he go? <laughs> so, like, in the next one, it might show him on the street or something, killing somebody else. And that's how, that's where the film will go from there. <laughs> but guys, this, like I said before, this film is still really awesome. I still, I, I would still recommend it for you. Setting all those things aside I said about it. But Halloween 2018 is going to get... A little bit of a lower rating, seeing as how all the things I said about it has been said. Halloween 2018 gets a B minus. Like I said, it's still a good film. It's still a good slasher film. But, you know, not everybody's gonna g going to agree, and that's okay. We're all different. I love it. Thank you so much, guys, for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Like, subscribe, get reputized, share. What did you think of Halloween 2018? And what did you think of my ideas about the editing scenes, the characters, and the rewriting? What did you think of my ideas? Would you have done it differently? Or do you like the movie the way it is? Leave me a comment down below and tell me what you think. Stay tuned for more reviews and videos coming soon. Peace to Ripper.